I'm joined now by Michael Bosacu, who is a senior fellow of the Atlantic Council based in Odessa. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it would be great to start by uh, getting your thoughts on what we've seen there, those satellite images of uh, uh, what could be uh, a new Wagner base. Sure. Well, bravo to the BBC for revealing this and verifying it. It makes me wonder uh, what type of intelligence the Pentagon is sharing with Ukraine. But yeah, this is fascinating stuff. Um, it certainly doesn't look like a piece of benevolence by President Lukashenko to create a summer camp for Belarusian Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. This looks like quite the uh, impressive uh, new base for the Wagner Group. Um, I have been one of the few, I think, who haven't subscribed to the consensus view that they're finished. I think they're gearing up for their next uh, performance, and that could very well be striking at a neighboring country. That could be Poland, that could be Lithuania, Latvia, or even Ukraine. And quickly, um, should they attempt to um, strike at Ukraine from Belarus, and it could be presented as a false flag operation, uh, Kremlin could have plausible deniability, but should they try to breach Ukraine's northern borders. My understanding from my sources here is that the Ukrainian forces are prepared for that. There is much, much bigger defenses there now. So it would not would not be a cakewalk by any means. So from what you've said there, we get some idea of why Russia would want this to happen. What's in it for President Lukashenko in Belarus? Well, a couple of things there. Um, he's actually a puppet of uh, Mr. Putin, so he doesn't have the luxury of saying yes or no. And secondly, um, he could also benefit from the uh, muscle that the Wagner Group provides. After all, there are um, uh, parliamentary and local elections next year in Belarus, and then he's supposed to face the ballot box uh, by the year after. Uh, also, again, I think um, it could be a, an era, a base rather for the Wagner Group with the backing of Belarus to, to strike. But um, it doesn't mean uh, that Mr. Pogosian, the head of the Wagner Group, is safe. Um, the hand of Russia extends very far into Belarus. And if I were Mr. Pogosian, if I were walking the streets of Minsk on a sunny day, someone comes up to me with an, an umbrella, I'd run the other way very quickly. OK, well, we've got a brief uh, moment left. Uh, when we look at the future of the Wagner Group, as you've said, we don't know exactly where uh, Prigozhin is now, but uh, the Wagner Group appears to still be recruiting fighters. It's not, uh, it's far from over for them. Yeah, Sarah Rainsford uh, did great reporting on identifying recruitment centers that are still active for them right across all of the Russian time zones. Uh, just quickly, look, uh, the Wagner Group still remains a lethal fighting force. It causes a lot of menace uh, from the United States down to Africa. It raises a billion dollars at least every year to fund help fund the uh, Putin war machine. So I think um, Mr. Putin and Mr. Prigozhin are codependent on each other in that regard, that they can't live without each other. So that's why I, I think that they'll keep him around a little bit longer, but perhaps more at an arm's distance to prevent him from causing more trouble in Russia. OK, well, it's uh, really good to get your thoughts on this. Uh, Michael uh, Bosakiu, Senior Fellow at the Atlantic Council based in Odessa. Thanks very much for having joined us. And you can find uh, many of those pieces that 